We have something epic for you today. It's our modern real estate agent epic checklist to help you with implementing everything you need to have a successful real estate business. And we mean everything. Let's talk about it today on the WBNL Wander Go Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. You can find all the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This is episode 314. Kind of awesome, Jan O'Brien. It's, 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 ep it's um, episode 314, which is kind of epic that we've had 314 episodes. And we're going to talk about that epic checklist today. Yeah, it's an epic day. It is. So last week on our podcast, which was number 313, that's right. We talked about how to align, connect, and prosper so you can have a magnificent any year. Insert the year that you want, which happens to be 2025 coming up. So we're going to dive into Scattered Podcasts as we move into the new year with giving you some great content in the form of a checklist today that is going to help you actually do the work, you know, the business work, okay, of real estate. That's what we're going to talk about today. So we created something about a year ago, longer, two years no, it's ago? it's been a while, yeah, two right. years ago. A couple years ago. Actually, I'll tell you how we created this. It's called Modern Real Estate Agent Epic Checklist. When I went to Florida and got my license and so forth, and, w and when I have changed companies, it, it, it came from that checklist. I realized that I had this actually, as a, we had it as a broker, didn't we? When somebody joins a company, they need an onboarding checklist. That So it starts with that. What are the things that you need to have in place if you're a new agent joining a company somewhere or you're an agent who's transitioned to a different company? And for me, it was a different state, right? And I just realized there's so many things I have to learn. So let me dive into what the checklist has. That's what we're going to talk about today. And then Matt's going to tell you how you're going to be able to download this absolutely free. What? Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's like, dang, the checklist is at least 10 pages long. Well, here's so. the deal. We've been updating it, right? So it's even it's more powerful than the one wow. online, right? So, you know, it's it's like 150,000 pages, I think at least. It's like, it's going to be about 15 to 16 pages when we're done with it. But so just realize that if you, as I go through this, it's something's going to appeal to you. I mean, I used it to set up all my systems here and in Florida, okay? So it starts with the admin and onboarding part because maybe you actually haven't gotten all the things that you need in your company, right? So the very first area of this is completing all the onboarding tasks, getting all the logins, all the company tools, getting your business email. So it's all that basic stuff. There's administrative things that you need to do, but there's always tools in your company that most people aren't even aware of. Right. So it's a reminder of that. The other thing we did when we built this was it became a piece, a companion checklist for our signature program, Real Estate Sales Builder. That's our core fundamental training program, Real Estate Sales Builder. So way we broke this down was if you need additional training in any of the areas that we're going to cover today, in the document when you download it, it's going to say you can find all that information about how to do this over in this module. So we really did it as a companion piece. It started out as a, you're joining a company, what do you need to do? And then it turned into, here's all the things you need to do to set up all your business systems for real estate. And then we have training that will help you if you need it. Okay, so that's the setup. We talk about the supplemental training that you need no matter where you go. So when I, for example, I'll keep coming back to, I know my training, my stuff here in Nevada. I've been doing business in Nevada for 30 plus years. I know the tools in the MLS and I've known the company tools of the couple companies I've been with, but I didn't know any of that in Florida. So I... The checklist says go learn how to use the software and how you do title and how does it all work right so all that stuff is not what we have in our training program because you have to know it for your specific state then there's other key tools set up right your voicemail your all your mls tools um do you have a domain name do you get a crm do you have a website so it just goes through all of that do you have a mobile app go set that stuff up set up a zoom account you're going to be using Zoom or Google Meet or whatever it is you want to do. Right. You you want to learn how to use all that. By now, everybody ought to know how to run a Zoom meeting, I would hope, right? <laughs> That's just part of our culture now, right? <laughs> Zoom meetings. And then the next section gets into, and it continues with this because it's about setting up your basics. And then we'll dive into the real estate system. Setting up 
your company stuff, right? Now we're going to talk about online presence and social media. The very first thing on this checklist is write a fresh bio. Update your bio. And guess what's after that? Which Janda needs to go do. Get a new headshot. Oh. Update your headshot, all right? Make sure you have profiles on all the listing portals. Anywhere where people are going to be able to find you, like Zillow, Realtor.com, Homes.com. A home light's another one. Set up a Google My Business profile. Start getting client reviews. We talk about all this in our sales builder program. Maybe refresh your, if you use Facebook, do you have a business page? How's your LinkedIn profile? Are you going to use Instagram for business? Do you have that set up? If you're going to do video, do you have YouTube? Are you going to do long form or short form video? Do you need to get that done? There's a lot right here, right? Everybody take a breath. Yeah. If you haven't done all that and you want to do that, that is days of work. And remember, this is meant to be comprehensive so you can prioritize what you want to do and do a little combination of working in and on your business a la E-Myth Revisited, right, Matt? you got to schedule time each week to work on your business systems. And the That's beautiful thing about this is this is a true checklist. So when you complete something, you can check it off. So it's easy to go back and see where you are and what you missed and what you still need to do. So ultimately, for the last part of this is decide what social media you're going to use and really use and why. And is it because your clients are there? Is your audience there? And so that's that part of the checklist. Go get all that done. And then if you need help with it, we have a module nine that covers all that, how to do it. Okay. Yeah. Now we get into marketing and your personal branding. Okay. Personal marketing, not marketing for listings and so forth and not not lead generation. That's coming up soon. But marketing and branding is everything from business cards. We recommend that you set up a Canva.com account, right, Matt? Yes, we do. It, that's where we make everything. Then it's going to have things like customize your pre-listing package, your home selling guide, your buyer's guide, any of your other things that you do marketing material-wise, marketing flyers, just list, just sold. So you use all these things because you need to personalize that. Um, probably something we should add right in here is do you want to have a – I just thought of it and I'll add it. Do you have a uh, logo or, you know, can you do that? Do you have certain colors? I, remind me, we have to add all that part. That's right. not in this checklist. I'm just looking at it right now. See, there's always something more to add. But because basically when you do the work about who are you and your unique value proposition and you just don't pick some colors because, you know, I love purple, there needs to be some, you know, I like this. I mean, you can, but you should really put some thought into that and what it all meaning behind it. And we have a lot of content on that. Yeah, what we'll do, Jan, is we'll actually merge our marketing brand checklist into the epic chest. Oh, checklist and even make it, more, make, make, it more, make it more epic. So there you go. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Matt. I knew yeah. we were, I was missing something. I'm like, don't we have this somewhere? Yeah, right, yeah. Anyway, adding that, we can supplement it, whatever Matt wants to do with this, because he's the one who's going to make this beautiful for you. So all of these things, we're trying to help you remember everything that you need to do. So this is for everyone, right? If you're brand new, please don't get overwhelmed and you're listening to this. Just know that this is over time you would want to have these things in place. If you've been in the business a while, hopefully this is going to say, you know what, I never really did that. So maybe I'm going to go back and really rethink my branding for the new year and I'll yeah. do the work that Matt has put together and how you can create all of this. And so you can have this message that when you're online and you're in person and you're doing mailers or whatever, people can kind of see who you, who you are and what you stand for and how do you separate yourself. This is so important always in the business, especially now with how competitive it's getting and how everything has changed with the NAR settlement, you have to show your value. So that's all covered in here, uh, including are you going to do a newsletter and, uh, you know, then get that all set up. Everything that you're going to interact with the public with needs to have your brand on it, right? And your and, ha and it needs to, you know, flow. Anything to add to that marketing guy? No, I think you, you covered it. And then we have a bunch of resources that we recommend that are in there for you. All right, now we get to your real estate business plan. See that? Huh. So obviously, have a whole I'm about to see these. on the truth. You need a written business plan. So we just—it's a reminder that do you have smart goals? Do you have a budget, business budget, a home budget? Have you determined your income goals on the four factors, which is how, how we train business planning, which is you just don't pick a number out of the air. You basically go, I need this much money to cover my. Household expenses, because this is what I contribute, 50% of household. I need 100% of my business. I want to have um, money that I put aside for taxes, and I want to have money, a block of money for you know whatever else you want to do this year, and profit. Ooh. You add those numbers up, 
to your profit margin that you want, now you come up with a number. So it's then you can calculate closing goals um, and then all the things, that, the numbers. That's the numbers part, okay? Create your action plan. We do all of that. We've, re we've reminded you about what the to do the daily is because that is your action plan, the daily. Once again, you must develop a productive daily routine. And the five areas are a morning routine to get you set on a positive mindset every day. Lead gen one to two hours. Lead follow up on the leads that you've generated. However you do it, you must follow up because not everybody's ready to buy now or sell now. What active clients that you might have in that given day or you need to do to prep for clients that you have tomorrow or the next week or whatever. And then admin, the catch-all, everything else, all the other stuff you have to do falls into area five. Okay. And then database, a client connection system. Most important to me after business planning. So the checklist items in there are going to be, are you, what system are you using? Where are your people? Where are they? Are they in a, are they in a spreadsheet? Are they in a CRM? Hopefully they're not on scraps of paper because you do need to be able to have a system for that. Uh, you know, and if you haven't done a CRM, then one of the things we have in here is put your sphere of influence in a CSV file. I recommend that you do that. Uh, and that's how you would upload it, but you could keep that or you could download it from your CRM. Sort and categorize all the basics, right? You know, what are your, get all the information that you need on your people, put them in your CRM, whatever system that you're using, um, you know, and then just, I, we have the basics of what we teach, uh, the touch program of, like, we believe in doing a, a monthly newsletter, writing notes, contacting your people at least three, three to four times a year, and then we give you ideas of how to do that, like on their birthdays, on their anniversary when they bought a home from you, um, holidays, client events. You decide what your program is going to be. We're just listing an example of one in this checklist, and you can decide what you're going to do. And we have a whole module, two on building your database and getting referrals. Now we get into the buyer and sales system. And so this just is a checklist of do you have create your buyer consultation presentation? What are your tactics that you're using to generate buyers? One to two hours of lead gen. Just a reminder of some of that. Um, all the things that you need to do are, are you using all the tools that you have that help you with the buyer? Have you set up your before, during, and after checklist for buyers? Do you have your processes, your, you know, basically your transaction management system? Um, you know, what are you going to do for a closing gift? All those things are in there. And we have like three modules that will help you with buyers from open houses to working with buyers to our sales cycle, which we love, personality, communication, sales style. And then we have a bunch of content in here on listing and your seller system, okay? So what we start with is list to last in any market, and it's a reminder for you to check off and prioritize what skills do you need to work on. For example, your knowledge, be the expert, your listing process A to Z, you need that for your buyer as well. Do you know how to prepare a great CMA report? Um, do you know all the forms? Are you an expert in your local market for what's going on with the housing market and the stats and what's happening, buyer, seller market? Prospecting and marketing and just some key things in there about are you always, do you have the mindset? You're all, I call it the ABCs. Always be connecting. You have opportunities all day long. Are you in the mindset of like, hey, hey, Matt, I, you know, did you know that I'm still in the real estate business, you know, or nice to meet you at Starbucks. Here's my business card or, you know, that type of thing. Or let me, let me add you to my mailing list because I do a hyper local newsletter where I talk about what's going on in the market. It was great talking to you about the market today as we were standing in line waiting for our latte, right? Uh, presenting and closing is another area negotiating. Decide what you need to work on. We all need to work on something, presenting skills, you know, whatever it is for you. And then, uh, just to, you know, decide and commit to what you're going to do to attract sellers. And then we're going to get into a lot of those areas here in a minute. And then we have a whole nother part of the checklist for pres your listing presentation and your marketing from your pre-listing, your unique value proposition, uh, marketing and service commitment. Do you have a written marketing plan? Are you really showing people what you do? Do you have a seller action plan in your CRM to follow up with the various levels of, you know, getting the lead, servicing the listing, um, the during and after all of that, the post closing, uh, then all your other, what are you going to do? Like make a decision. So I've listed everything that we do decide on your listing marketing tactics. I'm just going to read a few of them. What's your advertising budget per listing? Are you doing website? Do you have a website and you're featuring your listings? Do you use a single property website? Do you have a social media plan for your 
listing? Um, do you do advertising, like boost a post or whatever you're doing on Facebook or wherever? Are you photography and video, professional photo uh, photos, a video or virtual tour, uh, 360 marketing tour, the YouTube if you're going to do video, and then shorts. Okay, so all of that is in there for you as well. Then the next section is all about choosing your lead pillar. So obviously we already have lead pillars in our, everyone has database. Everyone has whatever you want. I call it database. You might call it database. Oh boy. I am going to call it the database is everyone knows who you are when you call or text them. So that is friends and family, sphere of influence, past clients, people you just met at an open house that they're not ready to buy yet. That's your database. Okay. So we all have that and we already covered uh, very quickly and we have a whole module on how do you stay in touch with the people that you know again a newsletter contact three or four times a, a year and there's various ways to do that that's keep it simple doesn't have to be hard right so first first on this checklist is effective open houses we have an entire module just on how to have amazing open houses so if you're new you need to go learn about open houses go watch other people d do them and learn from that uh, we have a thing in here about how to build your own open house kit. So it's everything from open house signs to materials that you're going to have with you. So when you set up like in a vacant house, for example, you could do an open house anytime if you have an open house kit. Everything from information sheets, relocation books to, you know, whatever, hire your tables and chairs and water if you need it. Okay. Uh, so all of that is covered in there along with making sure are you down with the dialogue and how do you get a conversation going and can you do a virtual open house? Do you know how to go live, you know, and, and invite people to your to your open house because you're on Instagram or something? OK, then we have an area on farming, not just geographic farming and the key things. We have specialty and niche farming. So that could be expires. I call that all farming expires for sale by owners, out of state absentee owners. I have a buyer for your home kind of a deal. Distressed properties. We call it the hometown farm. If you weren't born where you, you know, in the area that you live currently and you came from somewhere else, which seems to be most people, nobody's hardly a native anywhere anymore. Um, born and bred, you know, born and raised. Um, you know, so you come from another area. So an idea that we always share with people, and it's worth talking about it right here because maybe this will get you thinking about a different type of farm, is if I, w I was grew up in the Atlanta area or Marietta area, I could literally do some things to look for people who own homes that are, uh, own homes here that have a mailing address for Georgia or Boston, where I was originally born. And now I can connect with them for a listing farm to say, you know, I have something in common with you. Same thing you can do with your last name. I can look up all the homeowners here that are O'Brien and I could have farmed them and make that whole Irish connection, right? Uh, so agent networking, that's another farm. So same thing. Go find agents that are have something in common with you. I was prior military. I could go look for through LinkedIn, and we have all this content in our sales builder program on, for example, how to build a network, an agent network using LinkedIn. Okay, and then specialties and designations. Do you practice? Do you, are you a specialty in probate or divorce or some kind of demographic area? So you get the idea. That's niche marketing, okay? I mean, that's farming. And, it, and um, now we get into niche and specialty marketing. There's a whole checklist in here about how do you choose it? How do you brand yourself around it? How do you let everyone know out there that you're a special, you have a divorce, you're specialized in helping people that are going through divorce? You know, not that that's the only thing that you're going to do, but if you're going to choose a niche, then you need to market it. Yeah. You need to be that. You need to be passionate about it. So there's so many ideas here from a, a specific type of newsletter to Facebook groups to, you know, just all types of things, building a specialty website, doing video content around it. There's so many things that you can do around niche marketing. What well, one of the areas that we added this year because of the way we're doing business here, Cosmo and I here in Vegas, is short video content creation. I did not do an area on long form. Um, I don't do that anymore. I think it's very hard to break into that, but this is specific for people that want to do short form. You could learn about how to do, you could use a lot of the content in here to do longer form videos on YouTube. We of course post our stuff on YouTube, just shorts, not in the long form area. Uh, so anyway, that goes down equipment and tools to choosing the platforms you're going to use, uh, the content pillars, what you're going to talk about, um, what your weekly plan is, 
and then just a little bit of a content strategy, which is basically the way we do it. Okay. There's a lot to learn. And it talks about this in this checklist. This video is not for everyone. And it says you've got to go learn the platforms. You've got to learn how to use your phone. You have to go learn how to edit unless you're going to hire somebody to do it, right? You have to get, you, you, it becomes a complete mindset shift that you like it and you're going to do it. And it's what you do all the, all the time. So and it changes so frequently you have to stay on top of it. So you've got to yeah. really be passionate about it. I mean, you got to, you know, you don't need a ton of equipment. You can use your phone, right. you need a microphone, you do need a wireless mic that works for your phone. You need to learn some editing software. You need to learn how to edit in the app that you're going to be posting on. Like if you're doing Instagram reels, you need to know how to put stuff on the reel. You have to learn all that. If you, and if you don't want to do that, then don't do this. Okay. This is the beautiful part about any of these strategies. I, I say it again and again and again, and I'm going to say it until I don't do real estate coaching anymore or any kind of business coaching anymore. Whatever you choose to go do to generate new business, you have to like it. You have to be passionate about it. And it's almost like in the beginning, you have to try them all on for size and feel it and learn it and decide, is this for you? And if it doesn't light you up, if you're not like getting up in the morning going, what am I going to do a video on today? Then it's not for you. You have to go find something that you like. So maybe you're skilled at it or you have some background in it. So whatever you choose to do, expires, FISBOs, networking, social media, you just need to choose it and own it. You can't really do all of it well, though. It's okay to do it. Try it all in the beginning until you can figure out what your niche is and what you're good at. So your sphere of influence and two more max, in my opinion, the, the power of three. So we have that in there for you. And then online lead generation. It's a whole section because we have a whole module on how to generate leads. So the difference between content creation that I'm doing is we're developing rapport and showing people and attracting people based on our content. And if people mm -hmm. are, know, like, and trust us. Online lead generation is Facebook ads, buying leads, doing all those things, and you're getting Zillow leads. Whatever it is you choose to do, we've listed it all, okay? Certainly, you do not want to do all these things. It's helping you with how, um, how well you're using your CRM to what are your goals for lead gen? What's your budget? We walk you through all that. What platforms are you choosing to do? If you're going to do Facebook ads, we have some stuff on that. Third-party leads, um, follow-up campaigns. There's a lot that goes into lead gen uh, and follow-up because if you run an ad on Google or Facebook or whatever – you're if you do it well you're attracting people but they don't know you yet you have you have to nurture them and follow up with them and get on the phone and start building that rapport uh, and that is a whole and some people are great at that and that's another way to do it you have leads come to you because you pay for them in some way with your time or your money and you then have to nurture them and all those leads that come in off we've done all of this Facebook advertising, Google advertising, we tried all these things um, through the years. We prefer the way we're doing it because it's in our zone, it's in our wheelhouse. The other is a grind. You get 20 leads and you might be able to talk to four or five of them. Yeah. You know, uh, And you know, if you're doing great on online lead generation, if you have 100 leads over time, if you can close 8 to 10 of those, you're a superstar. Mostly it's about five, four to five in a hundred are going to turn into business. So you get, if you commit to lead gen, online lead or buying leads or third party leads, you have to be dedicated to the follow up, follow up, follow up has to be things that you spend a couple hours a day, all day long where, because the leads are coming to you. See it. So it's a little bit passive. We're more, we're gen, we're doing things to get people to call us mm -hmm. And then you're paying on online and some, not online, it could be anything. It could be whatever third party leads. And you're getting a list of people to call from whatever it is you choose to do, a Facebook ad, a Google ad. They don't know you, you don't know them, and you have to be good at on the phones and follow up and try video and text and all the ways that you're going to try to get this person to call you. Okay. So totally people kill it in all those fields, but you have to like it. I didn't like it. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> and then we end our epic checklist, Matt, with the business and financial fundamentals, right? And this is all about, you know, setting up your, your separate accounts. Should you form an LLC? Are you really looking at your, uh, the, the things that you would do to ultimately sell your business one day? So we walk you through 
treating your business like a real business on the financial side and all the systems that you need in place so that you one day could, you know, sell your business if you wanted to. Okay. So that is really what's in our checklist. That's now, it. It's meant to be, here's the topic. I don't even know what you're talking about, Jan. And then you're like, oh, well, you go to module 12 to learn all about business and financial fundamentals and getting our sales builder program will help you on the how to do all of this. Right. If you get our checklist and what's the deal we have for our awesome listeners and subscribers. Yeah, we're, we, we, you know, getting ready for this podcast, I've gone back in and actually beefed up this checklist quite a bit, actually, from what we had before, which was already epic as it was. If you want to get that checklist, first of all, go over to wbnlcoaching.com, go to our freebies page, it's right down there, scroll down past the free courses. Why do we have so much free stuff, General Brian? I don't, I don't know. Whatever. We'll talk about that at a later date. But it's awesome for you listeners out there that we have stuff. So go down there and um, and and um, click the button. It's going to be new, actually, just for this podcast to click the button that you um, are going to be able to get ten percent off our real estate sales builder course if you actually download our epic checklist. So check that go. out. Um, uh, great value there because you know what this checklist is fantastic if you don't have our course because it's got everything pretty much A B C soup to nuts you're going to need in your uh, business, but. Just like everything else in real estate or anything you do in life, you know, you can have a whole long list of things of what to do, but what you need to know is how to do it. And that's where a real estate sales builder comes in that really gives you um, the, the how to and puts this all together, takes all of these uh, line items in this checklist and will serve them up to you to build a strong foundation so you can thrive in your business. So all that over at WBNLcoaching.com, over in our freebies page, Epic Checklist. If you want to learn more about Real Estate Sales Builder, go over to our course page and check that out. You know, Real Estate Sales Builder is a all-inclusive course. There are um, uh, 12 modules and uh, 95 videos and over 110 downloads. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So go check that out over at WBNL pod, or WBNLcoaching.com forward slash courses and learn all about that today. So good stuff there, Jan O'Brien. This that, that just checklist is awesome. Every time I look at it, it kind of blows my mind. That's good stuff. It will definitely help you. And you you uh, you can pick and choose the things and prioritize. And you know, maybe one month you decide you're going to work on you know the seller system for whatever you know whatever. You don't have to do it all in one day, is what I'm trying to say. But it could yeah. help you set your goals and your outcomes and your intentions for the new year and how you're going to level up your business next year. Very cool. Hey, General Brian, uh, we have a special guest coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, Brad, why don't you give us a little uh, heads up on what that's going to be about? Yeah, Brad Gustafson, known him a long time. We've been managers together here, and he's been in the real estate business a long time. And he, a long time ago, he, he created a system. It was a manual system, which is basically a whiteboard, a transaction system whiteboard. Well, he took that over the years into a uh, where it is now, which is a digital version. So it's called TransTrack. I love it because it is literally a transaction management system that you could use for yourself, a checklist, if you will. But what's powerful about it is he took the time to write procedures. So it, it really has, it. I guess it, it also acts as your procedures manual for how you do transactions with buyers and sellers. So it's so powerful. We're going to talk to him about how it works. He has a, I went through his course. He has a Udemy on it where you can download it. His first version was a Google Docs. Like we believe in using Google Docs and I use Google Docs now. And recently, I think in the last couple of years, he transitioned it to uh, software that you can get on a monthly basis and uh, take everything into a, instead of a, just a Google checklist, it's now a, a Google doc rather. It's now a interactive, you know, transaction system. But I love that he's written procedures for like 30, 40 different tasks for working with a buyer and seller. And all you would have to do is get his version and modify. You don't have to write the procedure. You just change it. Right. So that you now have an operations manual to train an assistant, to bring, to build a team. Brilliant. Brilliant yeah, stuff. So we're talk about that. November. It's good stuff. That the, his actual um, uh, platform looks really good too. It's not. It's not overwhelming. It's uh, user friendly. It's. It's got a nice appeal to it. So it's a. It's a good transaction. I'm looking forward to talking to Brad. That's going to be yeah. awesome. Jenna Brian, you just took a little uh, sojourn the last few days to one of yeah. your favorite places, your mecca, uh, Sedona. 
I know we're, we're, we're getting towards the end here, but just tell me like, what was that one moment that you, when you were gone, that you kind of had your moment of Zen? Oh, uh, it was just, honestly, it, it takes a day or so. Anytime you go do something to sort of unwind. And we did that. I had a friend visiting and she and I always go, she's from Maui, which is a, already a magical place. Right. But Sedona is a place that we always used to go when she lived here. So I just, it's it, for me, it's when you're driving in and you finally get into, there's an area on this 89A as you're coming off the 40 from Flagstaff, which the drive's beautiful to get to Sedona if you've never been, but you get the first glimpse of the rocks, right? The red rocks. And that immediately puts me into a space of like, yes, I'm home. And I'm going to be able to enjoy it. And the weather was perfect. We were able to do a full moon meditation, a guided meditation with a, a lady there that does that was brilliant. The weather was perfect and we, you know, got out and went to my favorite cathedral rock, the Oak, the Oak Creek. So we were, it's a beautiful little hike to be able to be, you know, near water and the rocks. And I, I don't know, I just always, I just basically am able to relax and, and I allow, you know, get inspired. So I'm rejuvenated and I'm inspired again. And there's great places to eat. There's so much art and things to go do there. I just love it. So that's fantastic. I always get excited whenever you go to this. Uh, get up so and get out, man. Yeah. Need, everyone you, needs a break. Yeah. Because you love that place so much too. You just mentioned something that's so key. Laura and I, you know, our, our Mecca, right. Is, uh, uh, Yosemite. And yes. you had mentioned when you're driving down 89A, you know, you get to that point, you're like, I'm home. It's like at Yosemite too, when you're going through that tunnel off the road coming. I know what you're talking about. You show that tunnel, and it's like you know it opens up there, and there's there that. It is. Yeah, it's like, and, and your body literally changes. You can feel that you are actually, like you said, home in a place that you're going to be able to connect yeah. with and find peace. And it's just discover really your place if you haven't, because it's like a full body sensation thing. It's like visually, but. Roll, I rolled the windows down. It's the air smells yep. different. It's beautiful. There's pine and all of this and the sounds, the feeling, all of it is just amazing. And talk about being able to just breathe and relax. That's what that place does for me. So yeah, I'm it. curious, you know, if you've made it this far in the podcast, listening to this, we're a half hour in here. Um, I, I, most people, not most people, a lot of people have this kind of place. Leave in the, the notes down below or uh, drop a comment on what your Zen, where, where your Zen, where's your Mecca? Where do you feel home? And where do you have that body changing experience? That whole thing where you can literally feel it. It's really exciting. It. Anyway, good stuff today, Jan O'Brien. If you want to get all the information about what we talked about today, go over to the our show notes. Uh, so this episode 300 14 wbnlpodcast.com all that information is going to be there including links to the epic checklist links to our sales builder program and uh, probably some links to small podcasts when we talk about sedona i'll put those in there as well so anyway until next time get up get out and be forever wandering but not lost beautiful excellent